The atomic bomb is the most feared and revered weapon on the face of the Earth. Only two have ever been used in war, but the first ever nuclear blast happened right here in the United States of America on a secret military base deep in the deserts of New Mexico. If you don't already know the story behind Oppenheimer, then uh, you're about to. Today we're looking at a timeline I made a few months back that explains everything to do with the Trinity test site, which was where the first nuclear bomb was tested. So let's go ahead and break this down. Sit back, watch, and enjoy. You already know we got the Perrier sparkling water ready at all times. And let's check out this timeline. So as soon as the video starts, there's a sound effect that is an impact that straight up just hit, right? And I actually stacked two on top of each other right here uh, to really give it that oomph, that punch. The atomic bomb. And it's completely silent. No music has started yet. And it's silent for about one second and then a very dramatic explosion, which is what you wanna see whenever you click on the title uh, and thumbnail of this video talking about the story behind the first nuclear explosion, right? It's the most feared and revered weapon on the face of the earth. Only two have ever been used in war, but the first ever nuclear blast happened right here in the United States of America on a secret military base deep in the deserts of New Mexico. So going back here, you might not have noticed, but this little ring around here is added. And that is because it's still an old clip. It's an original clip, obviously, of the explosion. And I wanted to make it the same look as these other clips that were also from the nuclear test footage. But I wanted it to keep the same look especially starting off as the others. So it's not just a weird change, right? So I added that and I got this framing from M Music Video 2, Film Matte 8. Now this is a little bit more square. So I pretty much just rounded off the edges and made it bigger so it covers the same area like the other clips. And so that's pretty much how I achieved this look and then moving forward here the tempo of the music music is very cinematic right the tempo is cut for each one of these clips exploding right so each one of them the impact is on the cut each one starts with the explosion happening tearing it apart uh, like so. And so it goes used in war, but the first ever nuclear blast happened right here in the United States of America on a secret military base deep in the deserts. Zooms in of New Mexico. Zooms into the area that the test was actually performed. Mexico. Inside the top secret White Sands missile range is the Trinity test site where the world first went nuclear. Dangerous classified weapons are still tested on this very site to this day. You're not allowed to fly over the site or view it from afar. It's impenetrable. Tourists are barred by law, except for a few hours per year. When the nuclear blast site is open for a select few visitors, and you can stand on the exact place where history officially went thermonuclear. Welcome to the most deadly place on Earth, the Trinity Test Site. weapons are okay there's a lot of effects on this one so going back here if we're looking here actually let me let me scrunch this down a little bit as much as I can and all right that's about it so going back here got layers stacked and stacked and stacked on top of each other. 
There's a slow zoom for added tension. And then as soon as and missile range is as soon as he says the missile range and where it was tested, we added in an explosion. And then I made the camera, you know, shake to try and give it that like an explosion just happened, right? And then it zooms in to the ground that closer to the ground that it was tested at with the X. And then we got some footage of just, you know, sci-fi stuff. And then we got this question mark that was tracked to the world. And don't ask me how they got footage from uh, space because you never know people these days. And then we've got a different frame here. This is what the footage looks like whenever it's uh, downloaded, but I added another frame, uh, still square, the same shape, but to give it that more of that vintage feel. We've got a calendar scrolling through and some B-roll. Going through and then the music really starts to pick up here and get more intense, as you can tell. And so the tempo here, it, again, it's being cut to the tempo, and I added these slow zooms on each clip to build up more tension building up to the spot I'm about to show you now. Welcome to the most deadly place on earth, right. the Trinity test site. And so everything goes silent and you just hear the explosion itself and a little bit different pacing as far as music and everything goes. So you got a little breather here, even though it's a, I mean, it's a nuclear explosion, so. Nuclear weapons are having a moment. For the first time in decades, nuclear powers are fighting wars against each other. Russia has 5,000 nuclear weapons. America has 5,000. China has 400 nuclear weapons. Israel 90. And Iran wants nuclear weapons. It's not great. Now, how did we get here? A man named Oppenheimer, the father of the nuclear bomb. In 1943, the famous physicist J. Robert Oppenheimer was named director of the Los Alamos Laboratory under the government research program called the Manhattan Project. He was tasked with creating the first nuclear weapon. And on July 16th, 1945, at 529 AM Mountain Time, Oppenheimer was on site to detonate the first nuclear bomb, nicknamed Trinity. Trinity created a 19 kiloton explosion that would change the course of history forever. Shortly after the atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan, creating devastating, previously unknown damage and ushering in the atomic age. Christopher Nolan's biographical blockbuster Oppenheimer went thermonuclear at the box office this summer, raking in nearly a billion dollars. But the blasts in the movie were filmed on a soundstage using gasoline and kerosene and slow motion cameras. The real blasts happened here, and it all started on the barren plains of New York State. That's what I'm talking about. That's a cinematic masterpiece. No, for real, I, I love that. Just, okay, let's go back and look at it. So we start back here as the explosion hits and the music changes uh, to something equally or even more cinematic and also dramatic as well, which I love this track, especially for this. Nuclear weapons are having right. a moment. 
So you've got the explosion, another explosion while he's explaining everything. And then I also added this riser here that really, you know, brings out the tension of going into the next spire. Right? So that's what it, so that's what it sounds like. It really, and the camera shakes too from the explosion from the clip. So that helps as well, but really brings tension to the next shot of the explosion and the music change, which I think is pretty cool. And we got this section here that is spinning around the earth and I tracked, um, the number that he's saying of nuclear bombs or yeah, nuclear bombs, right? It has 5,000 nuclear weapons. Weapons. All right. So, and then you got the flag attached to it and then it spins around to America. Again, stating the number spins faster and faster and faster. And there's motion blur over top all of this, um, which really makes it look clean. If you haven't heard me that, heard me that, what? If you haven't heard me say that before, it makes it look clean. And then you go through this section, it zooms out, spins out from the world, and then it cuts to a clip of Oppenheimer. And again, I've got the frame. It's a square clip, but I decorated it a little bit more to give it more of a vintage. Blue. Ooh, I got to speak better to give it more of a vintage look. Right? Chops in, makes it more dramatic, cuts in on his face. Shows more background clips, flashes, vintage background. Right? And pretty much just cutting through old clips while he's explaining everything. And now if you look back here, pretty much every shot is cut, which is why it flows so nicely, is it's cut to the track. And it just, I love it. Right? Right, it even, like there was no cut here, but I positioned it to where the bright explosion happens on the tempo of the beat, right? So it's cutting. Boom, and then literally, boom. <laughs> Cuts again. Right, and he's explaining more here. And it starts getting a little bit more dramatic. And so I'm holding on these clips or these pictures a little bit longer than the tempo before to really focus in on everything that he's saying. Even here, I positioned it to where the third explosion where he's talking about World War, what does he say here? And ushering in the atomic age. The atomic age, right? Talking about bombs and stuff. I have it to where the third, um, the third explosion happens on B as well. Right? Again, On B, on tempo, holds on a little bit more while it's building up. Right, and it goes quiet to really hone in on what he's saying and for dramatic effect and just really piece together the drama. Right? Every cut is on beat. 
So, focusing on that. Uh, well, well. And then, yeah, it goes silent, but it fades out. Um, here, believe me, trust me, it's, uh, it was better than that. So it has that echo fading out. And it, it all started fading. on the barren plains of New York So what does the site look like today, almost 80 years later? Is it still radioactive? How do you even get there? We went and it blew our minds. The Trinity test site is approximately two hours away from the nearest airport in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Once you get there, we rented a car, drove south to Socorro, a little town with the closest hotels and restaurants to the site. The next day, we got up at 4 a.m. to beat the crowds of thousands that show up every single year. The line starts at the Stallion Gate, which is not easy to find, especially when it's pitch black outside. GPS will not help you get there. Remember, this is a top secret missile test facility, so it's by nature hard to find. And by the time the Stallion Gate opened at 8 a.m., the line was as far as the eye could see. After waiting for three hours, the military let us in. The property was crawling with army, military police, National Guard, and paramedics. This area operates as a top secret missile range, so these military members did not want to be filmed. Uh, is that on, that GoPro? Yeah. Yeah, I need you turned off. Oh, okay. The first artifact you can see on the way to Ground Zero is the steel. Okay, stopping there, going back and looking at it. We've got, whoo, okay. So let's see, where do we start? Where do we start? Here. All right. So we're looking back uh, on the timeline, right? It zooms out, shows what we're doing here. And wherever he says almost 80 years later, it goes into color. Uh, pretty simple reference there. Um, nice effect there. Words popping up on screen. And for this, I pretty much added uh, the M Tracker 3D. And I tracked it to this plane shot. Um, and I downloaded this dust explosion and pretty much had it, had this zoom up, not zoom up, but you know, scale up uh, with the explosion to give it that effect. And then I also shook the camera a little bit to give it that explosion feel like earlier on too, right? And so going through, looking at it, zooms out, New Mexico, everything's tracked, right? Go over there, some B-roll. Right, showing the footage. Got the sound effects here, like an error is happening. Goes through. Then right here, I've got the uh, sound effect going with it. And then it goes to his words. Let us in. And then pretty much straightforward for a little bit here, just showing the clips and everything like that. Um, and then it goes silent. And yes, another track is being used for this. So we're on to three now. And then moving forward. The first artifact you can see on the way to ground zero is the steel casing made for the bomb drop named Jumbo. When the atomic bomb is detonated, there are two explosions. The first explosion is a TNT explosion, which destabilizes the already unstable element at the core of the bomb, uranium or plutonium. Destabilize these elements enough, and you will split an atom, and you will unleash a nuclear explosion. The scientists were confident in the first one, but not confident in the nuclear explosion since, well, there had never been a nuclear explosion before. So they built this huge steel containment vessel to hold the bomb and catch the leftover plutonium in case it didn't detonate properly because plutonium is very rare and very dangerous. This is what Jumbo looked like when it first came to the site. 10 feet in diameter and at 214 tons, massive. The scientists didn't end up using it though, so they just blew it up anyway. You enter the Trinity site. All right, going back to that section, might have been some cool effects that you might be interested in that just happened there. I at least want to 
my favorite's part of it. Um, so going back here. Okay, go back, go back, go back. So here you got the arrow pointing it out. And Jimbo. And we got this bomb falling. Don't worry, this is all fake graphics. This actually isn't happening. So the effect goes in. And so pretty much, let me just, let me just play this section again. The first explosion is a TNT explosion, which destabilizes the already unstable element at the core of the bomb, uranium. Right, and so this is going faster and faster. You see the atom, um, and then it goes faster while he's talking, and then it breaks, and then it, the explosion happens. Nice educational content. And then, so if you listen to it with the sound effects implemented on it, this is what it sounds like. Whoa. So I pretty much added a wind falling from the sky type of sound because you're in the sky following this bomb. And there's a little spark and it kind of goes right like you're going inside of the the thing you know it sounds cool right and so there's a long riser that i added keyframes here as well to make it louder the more intense it gets and then I added a sword effect, like it's being, you know, broken in half, cut in half, just for cool effect, right? And then again, um, and again, camera's shaking a little bit more, shook, and then it, you know, and then the explosion transition into this next part of it, which is pretty much straightforward B-roll. You got some assets that slide in, um, stuff like that. And then you enter the Trinity site through another guarded militarized gates with signs that read, keep out radioactive. So how radioactive is the site? On the way in, there were experts with Geiger counters to show us. Even though there are small traces of radiation still here today, they showed us that most household items actually contain more radiation. Uh, by definition, we're all radioactive because we can't live without potassium. So and you can't just ingest non-radioactive potassium. After starting our journey at 4 a.m., we finally made it to ground zero. The Los Alamos scientists developed two designs for the bomb, one with a uranium core and one with a plutonium core. This is where they tested the plutonium design. When the test was performed in 1945, the bomb was detonated on top of a 100-foot tower made of steel. This is all that remains of that tower today. The heat from the blast vaporized the steel frame and it melted with the desert, creating a glassy green rock-like material called trinitite that can only be found in one place on Earth, right here. This site used to be covered in trinitite until the government removed most of it. You can still find little scraps and pieces here and there, but it's a federal crime to take it. If you really want a piece, you can buy it on the internet. Next to what's left of the tower is a large... All right, going back for this section, everything, there's nothing too crazy. It's just kind of cut with the music. He's explaining everything that's going on. Um, got some freeze frames, black and white with the text, right? And everything, for the most part, is cut with the track that's below it. Who right here, right? Explaining some stuff. And again, got that frame on it. Give it more of a vintage look. Just help it look more vintage, because obviously it is. And then, you know, some photos, all of this stuff showing B-roll. And pretty straightforward stuff right here. 
I right, got the arrow. And then a nice uh, cut in the music showing that you can buy it for 39 bucks. You guys paying uh, 39 bucks for f some Trinitite? Next to what's left of the tower is a large obelisk statue erected to commemorate the site, made of lava rock. Finally, a replica of the bomb itself. This is what they called Fat Man, named after Prime Minister Winston Churchill. 10,000 pounds, 128 inches long, 60 inches in diameter. The Fat Man is an implosion type bomb with plutonium 239 at the core, surrounded by explosive chemicals. When the explosions are detonated properly, the shock compresses the plutonium at the core, increasing its density to sustain an explosive nuclear reaction. And the results from dropping one are equally monstrous and speak for themselves. Next, they drive you to a place. So again, explaining through everything here, showing some assets above, words, you know, sound effects. Most of the time, whenever a text or title pops up or something that just, you know, cuts in, I find it a little bit better to add some sort of sound effect. Uh, it just makes it a lot more professional sounding. Um, because it seems like there was more work put into actually, you know, instead of just throwing like a text or something on top of there, whenever you add that sound effect, it gives that extra little spice that makes it sound very, and look, uh, good. So whenever he says it, right, you got that sound effect that's indicating like, boom, again, another sound effect that indicates that. So for the most part, I try to keep that whenever text pop up. And I mean, you can choose different types of sound effects if you want as well. Uh, like a click, a pop, or impact, like I was just using here. So there's multiple ways that you can implement those sound effects, but you can tell wherever you watch a professionally edited video, most of the time there's sound effects that just makes it transition into the text or asset that's being put up. And so going through here, got some photos, and then we reuse this effect here, uh, indicating what he was explaining about the process of the bomb exploding like before. Uh, so we use that. And then speak for itself, right here is the explosion. And yeah, definitely uh, speaks for itself. Next, they drive you to a place where Oppenheimer built the bomb with his own hands in the McDonald House. The Manhattan Project moved into the house in 1945, and the best scientists in the world stood right here in the plutonium assembly room where they built the gadget, as they codenamed it, by hand. The experimentation done here was so dangerous that two of these scientists died due to radiation poisoning caused by accidents from handling the dangerous plutonium core, later dubbed the demon core for its lethal properties. After these tragic incidents, the Los Alamos laboratory canceled all future testing, melted down the cores, and ceased all hands-on critical testing for good. After Trinity was detonated, the government lied to the public to cover it up. Impact. The locals knew something had happened because the shock waves broke glass windows up to 120 miles away from the site. It wasn't until after Truman dropped two atomic bombs in Japan less than a month later that the government finally admitted the truths that this is where they had tested the first nuclear weapons. Immediately, the Trinity site became subject for public interest and controversy, and it continues to be an insanely popular place to visit 76 years later today. After watching the first nuclear... And so going back here again, um, more B-roll talking about the house, um, going through just showing the assets that he's explaining. Again, we've got the noise in the background and all the, the film look to kind of give it that vintage uh, style because it is very appropriate inside this video. I tend to try to not 
some styles get overused sometimes, like the film style, for instance. And at some moments, it's, yeah, it's cool and stuff, and it looks cool, and if it works good, then, you know, that's good. But I try not to use it all the time, especially if everyone's just using that style because then you're just pretty much doing what everybody else is doing and not trying to make, you know, a unique style for yourself. Uh, but in this one it is very appropriate because of the time framing that's in this video. And so as soon as I knew they were filming this, I'm like, all right, that is the style that I'm going for. And so that's pretty much the story behind that style to make it fit the time frame that it was that it's explaining again we got a shake um focusing on it and there was an impact like i said before she'll you'll now that i said it you'll notice a lot of these have those sound effects behind and then again, got more of the explosion, highlighting what he said. And then right here, we've got like the, now I know it probably wouldn't look like it, but like the lens is shattering. Uh, that's probably not what it would look like. The camera, well at this rate, the camera would probably be obliterated, but that's the effect we went for here. And more B-roll talking about, you know, the bomb and photos explaining everything that happened, you know, where it was dropped and all that, and the explosion happening. Immediately, the Trinity site became subject for public interest and controversy, and it continues to be an insanely popular place to visit 76 years later today. After watching the first nuclear explosion. And some more B-roll. After watching the first nuclear explosions in history, Oppenheimer uttered these famous haunting words. Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. When the bombs were used to kill over 200,000 Japanese citizens in war, Oppenheimer told President Truman, Mr. President, I have blood on my hands. He felt great and deep regret for building the bomb. Truman was disgusted, throwing Oppenheimer out of the White House. I dropped the bomb. He hasn't half as much blood on his hands as I have. You just don't go around belly aching about it. Crybaby scientist is what Truman called Oppenheimer. If Oppenheimer were alive today, he'd be glad to hear that since 1945, the nuclear bomb has never again been used in war. Nuclear weapons officially. So we've got the frame around here, like the other shots as well. And the audio here, you know, raises the volume goes up. Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. And then we got some slow zooms going on, more slow zooms, the B-roll like normal, some zooms, and I've I positioned these on the focused area that obviously I want you to focus on. And so the box is focusing. And then zooming out from so it was focusing in this area, and then it zooms out from the same area that was in the focus point of that zoom. Uh, so your eyes aren't looking, you know, all the way across the screen. Because if I used a photo of him over here, and then we're zooming in over here, then it would be a little bit, it would feel a little bit, just a little unsettling, like on the eye, because just looking at a different spot is just a little bit awkward. And so you want to make sure that if you're transitioning, it's in the same focus point <clears throat> and try your best to make it in the same focus point. So the viewer isn't looking all over the screen, you know, wondering what am I supposed to be looking at? So again, I zoom in. And then more B-roll here. 
the explosion with the sound effects. Has never again been used in war. Nuclear weapons officially ended World War II and prevented an American full-scale land invasion of Imperial Japan, no doubt saving millions of lives. The prospect of mutually assured destruction kept America and Russia from plunging into open hot war during the Cold War, saving millions of lives. There's no way of quantifying exactly how many lives have been saved by nuclear deterrence and how many lives have been made better by the greater study of nuclear sciences. It's worth asking, has the atomic bomb served as the greatest weapon of peace ever created? A creation that inspires, fascinates, and haunts us to this very day. The splitting of the atom at the center of the universe all happened right here in the middle of nowhere. Boom. So we go back, we got some B-roll, and you'll notice there's a lot of the, the framing going on with these clips because it's changing for the different styles, obviously. Going over, talking about all that stuff, and then just some B-roll going across there. And then again, you got an impact here. Weapon of peace, question mark, highlighting what he said. And then one of the cooler parts of the video that I enjoy is at the very end, really ends the video off right, is you got the atom back, you know, breaking, splitting, and then it zooms out. We got this warp effect that zooms out, Earth is spinning, and then it zooms out to the universe. Again, I don't know where these guys got the, the this footage. Uh, don't ask me, all I do is edit. But, and then it goes back, zooms all the way in from the universe, serious cra crazy lenses. Uh, that's able to zoom in that far, that's pretty impressive. But the music completely cuts out, and you hear the explosion and it's silent and that's the end of the video and so if you listen to this with strictly just the sound effects which is what makes it sound so oh my goodness all right there we go with strictly just the sound effects Right, and then I guess if you include uh, that as well, you got the explosion. And so I just think this part's pretty sick because it warps through. The splitting of the atom at the center of the universe all happened right here in the middle of nowhere. And that's the timeline. I will see you at the next edit.